Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today we have Eugene. Hello. Well, we have Stuart. Hello there. We have Amy. Hey all. And we have Scarecrow. Ah. He's dead, as always. <laughs> no, 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 he's, he, had, he had really late work again, so he can't join us. I know, I know, you keep in undating us with a letter. Now, one listener keeps going, why isn't Scarecrow here? It could... It's actually, really? now that I look at it, the email address could be his. He could be wishing <laughs> that he's not here. Uh, that doesn't actually surprise me that much. Anyway, this is episode number 77. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, we are talking Supergirl crossover and Supernova pre-event. As well as there was a um, preview of the Killing Joke release. So we're going to try and plough through all of that. There's something else I've forgotten. Captain America TV spot dropped, that's right. You knew I'd gonna forget it. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be looking at that as well. So let's get the show on the road. Starting off with the Supergirl crossover, Supergirl Flash crossover. Oh yeah. Stuart, what do you think? Ah, uh, considering I don't watch Supergirl at all, that was the only reason I watched Supergirl. Fair enough. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Oh yeah. No, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I I like it how they sort of explained it that Supergirl, while still technically happening in, happening in the same multiverse, doesn't happen in the same universe. She's effectively like Earth yeah. three or Earth four or Earth twenty or Earth seventy, which do have yeah. Oh, well, that was my question. That was my question of what I first heard. I'm like, okay, how are they going to do this? Yeah. So, did you see the tachyon enhancer on the front of him? Tachyon. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I got a sneaking suspicion this episode was meant to air after the episode of Flash that aired this week. Because I don't really talk about the Tachyon dearly until this episode of Flash, so... Yeah. yeah. But other than that, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I liked the reference to CW. Oh, that was great. I was just like, wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, shots were fired. <laughs> So for those listening and didn't watch the episode, uh, Kak Rant in the Supergirl so- show said, you look like the racially diverse cast of a CW show. Like, yeah. full shots fired on the script. Oh, yeah. And the, the, the best part was, um, it reminded me, because Arrow and Flash all air on CW, for those in, who don't yeah. know. Um, the best part was, it reminded me of the old days of Stargate. At the end of the first oh. season of SG One, they're on and the the Poffice's mothership, and it's got a giant sphere thing in the gate, which is sort of like a t- like the Gould equivalent of a TV. And O'Neill yeah. looks at it and goes, well, "What if it gets Showtime?" At that point in time, they were airing on Showtime. <laughs> it's, it's the same sort of a whole god <laughs> joke. So so bad, and yet so so amusing. So, yeah. Expect much less from Jack. Oh yeah. So yeah. Um, Man, that was it was a lot of fun. It was the the girl getting the sonic powers was pretty trippy. The oh, banshee. the banshee! Yeah, that was kind of cool. And using sort of Flash using technology he developed in the Flash series to defeat the banshee in that series was pretty cool. But I just find it funny you block their ears and then all of a sudden the sonic pushy bullshit throw them through the air thing stops working. Okay. <laughs> it's like, Huh. <laughs> it's like, huh, so that's how it works. Oh yeah. So yeah. Um and sort of I love how um I love how je- um jealous uh Jimmy was. Oh, <laughs> Jealousy, was that he? name is Olsen. <laughs> oh 
Oh, that line, it? that line was hilarious. Oh yeah. And man. Uh, it was a good episode. Probably my favorite episode of Supergirl so far. Um. <laughs> Which is really sad to say. Yeah. Kind of is. Like, yeah, I have nothing was, against the actors. I have nothing against the actors on the show. It's just the script writing is weak. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, put it this way. In the list of things that were released that were being renewed on that channel, Supergirl wasn't on it. I noticed that. It, it has, just for the record, it has been renewed for season two. It's just someone forgot to put it on the list, and the internet went, oh, oh, true, oh true, about it not being on there. So, this is as far as I'm I know. I'm surprised people actually here. cared. Yeah. So. I'll have a, I'll have a quick look. I would, I would love a Legends of Tomorrow Supergirl Arrow Flash See, full team up. Just. How would, how would, how would Oliver get over there? Legends of He's Tomorrow. Oliver. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm the arrow, and I will protect this city. How did you... <laughs> uh, how did you get on the radio? I'm the arrow, damn it, I do whatever I want. Uh, it's like Batman. No, 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 no. See, what he does is, the flash runs really, really fast. So the way the arrow does it is, he makes an arrow that's really, really sharp and shoots it really, really hard. And then... Mm. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff happens, and then they're on the Supergirl world. But to be honest, Arrow just there's nothing the Arrow could do in the Supergirl world which would actually help, because all of her bad guys are so stupidly beyond OP that he would just be turned to paste in about eleven seconds. So usual. Yeah. So. There's nothing about um Supergirl actually being renewed. Like, there's no renewal news yet. There isn't? No. Oh, okay. I heard it had been. Oh, well. I'm on, I'm, on the, I'm on the official wiki and there's nothing on there. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll leave this one to the news guy. And if the news guy's wrong, he gets thrown out the airlock again. Ah. But he enjoys being thrown out the airlock. Yeah, I know. Eh. I've, I've got to find another punishment. He gets a little bit too happy now. It's like, I'm throwing you in the airlock. He's like, yay, I'm going in the airlock. It's like, this should... Nope, it shouldn't make you happy. Why are you happy? Just, Yay! Yeah. This, this, this is not meant to be a thing. <laughs> so. Anyway. So, Arrow and Flash also this week. Um, what do we think of the whole Damien Dark thing? I'm intrigued to see how, well, how much power that ring has. Yeah. So. It's clearly got more power than than it than it than than what it looks like it has. Oh yeah. And Damien knows what to do with. Oh no, no, he knows what to do with it. He's just keeping everything on the wraps. Oh yeah. So do you suspect that going to jail was part of his plan? Possibly. I'm not sure it was part, part of his plan, but he's definitely willing to. Yep, and Eugene is... is Eugene is bre breaking up again. So, yeah, it, I'm definitely curious as to where they're going with that, but I still feel like... Um, well, supposedly the death, to to the, de the, uh, the death that we've been talking about all season is meant to happen on this week's episode, so... Ooh, looking forward so to that. I only find out what happens with that. Yeah, so... I'm beginning to suspect it might. I'm beginning to suspect the Death Mighty is one of the two Diggle brothers. Yeah, it could be. Well, here's the thing, Flussy. I don't think would care if it was Andy. No. So it. Well, it, it I, I'm still think. I'm. I'm still leaning towards either Thea, um, Quentin, or um, Diggle or John. Well, to be honest. Based on the direction that Oliver and um, Felicity are going at the moment, the Felicity we saw in the car still doesn't match up to the Felicity we saw this week. So it could be still could be quite as easily Felicity that dies, and that Felicity we see is actually him just being totally broken. 
and just hallucinate. Oh, like you mean how he occasionally sees shadow? Yeah. Interesting. So, um, that was one of the things that I think Scott was talking about ages ago from Garrison 7 when I was down there last talking to him. Speaking of which, he's been so busy this week working on, oh, some, yeah. working on a big reveal for Supernova. I can't tell you what I it think is. Superno- I, is, is. I think Supernova might have actually spoiled it. Ooh, what did Supernova say? Uh, it's not what I say. I saw um, a, a, a guide for uh, from um, the floor map. Yeah. Like, in their event guide. And it had a... At, um, at the Garrison 7 stand, it had a vehicle. Ooh. Yes. So I think they jumped the gun a bit. They, they might have jumped the gun a little bit. But... So the point is, he's been working his ass off to make that thing, and put it this way, you'll be able to climb on it, you'll be able to sit in it, we'll be taking photos at it all day, um, and I won't be there, and everything, so yeah, get definitely swing by the Garrison 7 stuff, it's going to be really, really good. Other than that, um, I know Stuart isn't going to Supernova because he's a pussy. Hey! No, okay, fine, you're broke, there's a fine line between the two. Um, Saving money for Gok, uh, Sydney Nova. Exactly. Oh yes, that I cannot wait for. Oh yeah. So, um, and Amy's going, aren't you, Amy? Yep. So. I just haven't bought my ticket yet. What are you looking forward to? Um, getting signatures. Um. So who? Wait. Ghosts. Who's who's actually going? We should definitely cover that. Oh, is in guess wise. Let me bring up the guest page. So, going to Gold, uh, Gold, Melbourne, doing the Melbourne and Gold Coast tour. Oh yeah, There's we have Jack. We have, oh yeah, we have Jack Leeson, aka the most hated character in all Game of Thrones, Joffrey Baratheon. Oh yeah, and doesn't he? Get so, 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 Oh, but he is so amazing. He's so good, though. I know, and he he's such a good kid. Like, he is spectacularly awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, he's yeah. the funniest guy around, but... Man, he cops some hate. I wonder if that... You know, the well, guy um, that always goes a... to the cons up here dressed as... Joffrey? I wonder if oh, he's yeah, going to rock up. I actually know him. You do? Actually, and it's a funny... Th- yeah, and his name's actually Jack. Wow. That is even more fun. And he's actually got, he's actually got a, a picture with with like with um Jack Leeson and, and like they follow each other on Instagram and shit. Nice. That's that's pretty cool and slightly terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh. What can you do? Yeah, and then we've uh, next up we have Chris Judge from SG One, obviously. Sees- he seems to love us, doesn't he? Oh yeah, he oh, he <laughs> loves Australia. Um, we got Adrian Palicki. Adrian, yeah, Adrian Palicki. Yeah, that one. Um, she's Bobby. one I'm gonna. So she's looking Bobby. forward to her. Yeah, Bobby. So she's one of us. Exactly. Today I am going to buy me a suit, like a proper shield looking suit from probably from Kmart for a buck fifty, um, and. <laughs> I'm, we wish. I've already photoshopped up myself a file folder, and I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting some stuff printed today, which are going to be nice. um, Avenger Initiative certificates. So they're going to be like A3 size. Sorry, not A3 size, A, A5 size, so half the size of a, of a standard letter piece of letter paper. And it's going to be so I can go around, and if there's a kid dressed up in Avengers gear... I give can, them the little card. I can pop the badge... And ask them if they want to avoid join the Avengers and just watch them freak the fuck out. If you were gonna be there if you were gonna be there, Stuart, I was gonna give you my video camera and have you follow around <laughs> behind me and film these kids just freaking out. You can always get Joe to do it, she's going down still. <laughs> so, she yeah. just has to figure out how she's going to get down. Well Why is that? Well I'm not going down and none of us drive. <laughs> okay, I, to be fair, I can't drive for medical reasons, so... Yeah. Well, She's hey, just lazy. <laughs> if she can get down to Brown's Plains, then I will take the rest of the way. But 
I am not going oh. all the way to the north side and up to bloody Whoop Whoop <laughs> to get her. <laughs> so it's going to add like an extra three hours onto the drive. Uh, I've got to, I've got to end up going to Northgate to go and get picked up by Andy. <laughs> to get travel to Nova. Ugh, it's switched to Northgate. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah. Mm. No choice. So. But, and, yeah, things you do to go to Nova. Oh, yeah. So, then you've got Alice and Mac from Smallville and the Ant Bully and a few other things. Sean Ashmore, who is actually giving out free signatures. He's from Quantum Break. We all know him from X-Men. Um, Iceman. Bobby. Iceman. It seems to be a, a theme with having Bobbies together, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> we got Iceman, Bobby, and then we've got and we've got Bobby from Shield. Oh yeah, and then we have Dawn Wells, Marianne Summers from Gilligan's Island. God, that goes back a while. Nah. <laughs> um, we've got Eka Davis from Jessica Jones, the originals, and Power Rangers. That is how you say his name, isn't it? Darvel. Darvel. Yeah. Um, Manu's back again. God, he, does he do? I think he does every convention. <laughs> Manu like, loves Australia to death. Oh yeah, he he just he, he does kaki bush in, and he's just at every convention at once. <laughs> Still the plus side, that'd be good money. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, Sean Mahia's back from Firefly and uh, Serenity. Serenity, Batman vs Robin, and stuff like that. So that's yeah, he actually yeah. voices Nightwing. In um in the new anime in the, all the new anime um movies. Nice. That that explains the joke in um, what's it called, Con Men, which is still a really weird series. Um, <laughs> Daniel Sharman. Yes. Teen Wolf, the originals, Immortals. Yeah, that's just all to get the teeny bopper girls happy. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't know there was a Harry Potter person going. Yeah, Ginny yeah. Weasley. Huh. I need to pay slightly more attention. Note to self, add her, <laughs> add her onto my list. Boy, did I have a crush on Ginny. Oh, boy. Is this why you're not going? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just really cannot. If I go, to, uh, plain and simple, if I go to Gold Coast Nova, I will spend the money I've, I've saved for Sydney Nova so far. And I cannot do that. Well, what do you expect, really? I... Did calculations for two photos and signatures. It's two hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, because the Aussie dollar's so low, all the autograph prices are going through the damn roof. Yep. Okay. Well, she's been added onto my con list. I can't believe I managed to miss that. Um, Amy Acker from Angel, Person of Interest, Alias, moving right along. Now we could start getting to interesting people right about here because these people. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Oh yeah. These next four. Oh yeah, the next four are, yeah, they're all Doctor Who universe. Three of them are Torchwood. One of them and is one of them Doctor is K nine. So we have Burn Gorman. We have Yanto. Because you can't say his name, can you? I'm not even going to try. And Gareth David Lloyd. It's not that hard. I'm just going to call him Bruce. <laughs> I saw, How can you, you not say to, Gareth? Okay, you need to go to him and just be like, Bruce. <laughs> You'll just be like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Just, his confused face be like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and, um... Naoko. Yeah, that one. And then last but not least, Bruce. The, who <laughs> plays K-9. <laughs> K-9. <laughs> Affirmative, Asto. John Leeson. So, so yeah. <laughs> actually, we've met John before. Actually, we've met John before. Amazing dude. Oh yeah. Such such a wealth of knowledge. If you ever go to his Q and A. Oh yeah. So then we have Richard Harmon from the Hundred Continuum and Bates Motel. He's in the Continuum. Yeah, he's in Continuum. Don't recognise him. I'll, <laughs> I'll leave that one to. I'll leave the next one to you. Oh, thanks. Sachin Sahil. Yeah, that. Well, actually, no, it's probably, Sa it's probably Sahel, not Sahil. There's only one E, not two. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one of those names that I just look at at my brain and goes, yep, nope, I quit. <laughs> um, you got John Charrett again. 
he is he seems to be turning up almost every other convention <laughs> Jaden well, Ryan from it's... Cheese TV are going to be there yep so. They actually have their own. Um, they actually have their own Facebook page now, and they also have their own YouTube uh, Let's Play um, series. Nice. Well, they actually focus mainly on classic games like Golden I Double Seven from the from the Nintendo sixty four and stuff. Nice. But to think of how old that is, though. <laughs> but nostalgia, like that's the thing. It hits my. It hits our generation because it's nostalgia. I know. Yeah, right? I know. And then we've got um, Diamond Dallas Page, three-time world champion wrestler. Who, to be... Yeah, I'm just going to leave that alone. Garrison He's also Seven, a yoga instructor. The Garrison 7 guys are going to be there again. Seriously, you need to go and see the Garrison 7 guys. And then we have a ton of voice actors and stuff who I'm not even going to get into. And comic... <laughs> I'll, I'll say their names. Good, you do that. Wait, which one? Don't worry, reading a thing. Keep going. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, uh, voice actors have a really awesome cast of voice a- uh, for voice actors. We've got uh, Ronnie Shell, who, who did the uh, main, who did the voice of the main character from um, Battle of the Planets, which is a very, very old anime. Like it was an anime my mum grew up watching, so it's quite old. Battle of the Planets was also <clears throat> also known as Gotcha Man. Yes. Yes, and we have a uh, we have a uh, uh, Bryce Papen, uh, Papenbrook who's been in a lot of things, Attack of Titan, Sword Art Online. Uh, Trisha, uh, Trina Nishimura is also in ta- Attack on Titan. Um, Bryce is actually the um, English voice of Aaron, and Trina is the English voice of um, uh, Mikasa. I almost forgot her name, and Jody would have killed me. Mikasa, Yukasa? Mika, Mikasa, Sukasa. I use that one and it just gets head shaken at me. Yep, anyway. Uh, and uh, rattling off the voice actors, we have uh, Brina Palencia. She was in One Piece and Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, she was actually the music director for Dragon Ball Kai. That was the one I looked at and went, wait, that was. She did a Dragon Ball Z? And had a closer look at it was Dragon Ball Z Kai and she was the music director. She also voiced. She actually also voiced. Um, she was also the um, English, English voice of Poi as well. Really? Yeah. Huh. Poor Poi gets owned almost as much as Krillin. And this. And now we come to the part where I'm actually really bummed. I'm not going to know because I would love to meet these next three guests. Co-founders of of uh, Critical Hit, Michael Gluck and Jason Hayes. They are video game pr- um, composers. Jason Hayes has done music for um, World of Warcraft, the StarCraft series, and a whole bunch of other things. Nice. Like I'm so bummed. Like I would love to get into his Q- go into his Q and A. <laughs> I still think you should just catch the train down, spend an hour there, spend all your money, and go home. I can't. <laughs> oh, I want to so badly. I want to. But he's gonna get us signatures at Sydney. Yeah, I guess. Instead of us spending a fortune down there. Yeah. I don't really okay. have a fortune to spend for down there. <laughs> um, Mary Emble. Alright, so anyway, that's a supernova. Supernova. Yeah, they were just getting all to cosplay guys, <laughs> cosplay yeah. people, okay. and okay. man. So, so I've, I've I've actually got a relatively small budget. Um, I'm only going to be spending. Which is a first. Yeah, I know. Let's see. Uh, based on current budgets here, one forty, one seventy. 170 plus 240 is yeah it's still less than five hundred dollars between five and six hundred dollars somewhere around there once you include parking and fuel and food so can be really um, weird this is one of the first cons I've been to where other people haven't sort of come with me I'm just on my own so hmm. yeah hashtag loner is hashtag loner 
Schmidt. Oh, I'll go. I'll be by myself as well. Yay! Isn't Scarecrow going? Plus, oh, I've been working. working all weekend. Aw, poor Hawk. Poor Scarecrow. He'll be at. He'll be at the. Um, one I fist. Yeah, the one I fist stall. Yeah, I've been plowing through. Um, you know how they released Pokemon on 3DS Virtual Console? I mean, playing through <laughs> the blue version as so fast much. as I can so that I've got a full team for Nova and the off chance that someone wants to battle. Oh, please. Everyone's gonna, everyone always takes the DSs to Nova. Yeah, I know, but... Yeah, I, you get so many gifts. I don't ever battle. So, yeah. I've already got can myself... I, wait for, like, I can't wait for Sydney because Sydney's lineup so far is immaculate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it depends on how many drop out, too. Too. Hopefully nobody. We'll see how it goes. Come on, we lost the um, the female doctor, uh, female master, master, then um, mistress, <laughs> and so one could... Torchwood crew. Yeah. Let's considering all in all, that's two people out of a whole tour. That's actually really good for Nova. I like, usually have a lot more cancellations. <sighs> Damn it! I wish I could go what? to Sydney. Tomorrow, Pierce is going to be there. <laughs> yep. Well, i got to go to Canberra this year and visit family. Anyway. I'll send you some books. Moving right along. <laughs> Let's move on to the Captain America thing. You got the TV spot up? Uh, I can get up. Yeah. I can't remember what TV spot number it is, so... I'm trying not to... I don't want to look at TV spots. I don't want to go into it ruined like I did with Star Wars. You made me have to do all that. Yep. I think it's number four. I thought it was number five. Uh, it's number four. You sure? I thought that was a number five. No, it's the one I'm looking at now is number four. So there's a new one up that got released like a day ago. Oh, a day ago, is there? Yeah. Um, it's um, Cap vs Black Panther. Is that the one you're looking at, or is that a different one? Let me just have a look. I'll post it in here. It's so organised. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is sort of the thing I dumped on them at the last second, so... No, I think you're right. I think number, it's number five. Yeah, number five's a new one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because that's the one everyone's going bonkers about. Okay, anyway. So, we, we, we do get a couple of new shots. Not many. Um, mm. We see what looks like more shots from the UN getting smashed, more of Tony Stark sort of talking. We see Bucky get arrested. I want to, going back to the UN, is that, um, because the, the, like, it goes from the UN explosion and then it um, goes to, um, Scarlet Witch? Yeah. I hate that name, I don't, is, I wonder if she's, like, standing outside the UN when it explodes. I or this is another... I don't think so. Well, we, I... we don't know where the UN building's located. Well... That's the thing. We, judging by the shot and by the buildings in the background... Of where the the building that's exploding, the background shot for Scarlet Witch is way too darrow. Lack of a better word, it's just all <laughs> crappy. It's yeah, dirt, yeah, it's yeah. Okay, cars. Fair it's, yeah, That's it's... probably like the beginning. That's probably the beginning of the movie where that incident happens. Yeah, and then we see. Oh, uh, I don't know. We see Falcon arrive on a pretty broken. Yeah, ass yeah, I know. And the next shot just confuses me. I'm like, is it like it? And you see like buildings about. I was like. It could be, you know, like, that's the thing, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, I find it too much, the... too much speculation, okay. too much speculation. Yeah. I find one thing funny with Civil War. The whole okay. fact is, Tony is going, we need to be put under control. Yeah. That's really good coming from Tony Stark. I know, right? <laughs> he spent the entire <laughs> movie fighting against the government taking control of his stuff. And now he's spending yeah. an entire movie doing the exact opposite. We need to be controlled. Yeah. yeah, the best people who control them are the ones with powers. Yeah. Oh, wait, they need Batman. The contingency <laughs> plans. Oh, God. <laughs> so, so, anyway, we see 
Um, it's we see War Machine arresting in that tunnel. War Machine is arresting Captain America and Bucky, and Black Panther. And we know, if we, yeah, and Black Panther's next to him. So, um, them losing all their gear. Bit more fighting, back to the airport. And, and get Tony we... gets asked how long you're going to play both sides. Yeah. And then <laughs> we see. Is his arm different? Is his arm different when he's in the tunnel? Bucky's arm, his ro- his robot arm. Is his arm different from when he's in the tunnel to when he's in the building? What do you mean? The metal looks a diff- looks different. I don't know if it's just lighting or not. But Probably. when he's in the tunnel, the um, the fist looks darker. But when he's um climbing up, the st- um walking up the stairs, it's a lot brighter. It could just be lighting. I mean, it'd be very interesting if they had multiple arms for him. Yeah, I think it's just lighting. Um, but yeah, you see, Panther actually grab grab Cap Shield in this one, and that is grab Cap Shield, but he actually manages to outstrength Cap. You can see Cap really struggling. As Panther rips the shield down. So. Yeah. Yeah, we get it end of... We actually get, um... We get this end of April, actually. Yeah, I know. We get this earlier. Like a week and a bit earlier. <laughs> Suck it, America. Pretty much. So. Yeah, we get it April 28th. So, so no. about three weeks. Yep. Yep. So yeah, so we're definitely doing a podcast day one for that. I was about to say, I don't want to do a midnight launch. God, no. That would be a nightmare. So, let me just see what day April 28th is. It is a Thursday. Well, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, we'll, we'll work that out when we get around to it. We might even delay that week's podcast until Friday. But, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. It's about time we do the model report. Yay! Hello. He's still there. This week's, uh... Of course he's still here. (laughs) Hello. Is it me? No, it's not. (laughs) I don't interrupt your report, so muzzle it. Shots fired. <laughs> this week's uh, this week's model report is more of a hobby report. <clears throat> um, I got in the loot crates, uh, Firefly cargo crate, <clears throat> and, and this is the <clears throat> first crate in the series, and it's one of the best one of these things I've gotten so far. Yeah, the pictures look um, really, really good. They're up on the, yep, the, the Facebook page for those who want to see them. The first item in there is a minifigure of Kaylee from Firefly. Um, it's similar to the um, Little Damn Heroes, only it's done as a more realistic style figure. And very well done because you can see all the little patches and stuff on her outfit. They have a little Kaylee teddy bear, which also has all the little patches and stuff on the jumpsuit. Nice. There's a set of uh, umbrellas to stick in your drinks, which has uh, Kaylee's um, little um, umbrella from the first episode. Lol. Huh? Lol. That's fine. I find that amusing. Um, then they had a, a random box called Firefly Cubits. These are little PVC figures, and you could have gotten one of ten. And the one I got was Simon Tam. That was the only one I was a little disappointed in because it would have been nice if they could have matched it with all the Kaylee stuff that's in this box. Yeah. 
Um, then they had two sketches that were done by um, Timothy Earls, um, which were based on the Re Reaver ships from the Serenity film. There was also two promo cards from the Firefly board game, one for the Fruity Odie bars, and then there's a Loot Crate Silver Hold card. There's a sticker from um, Persephone, which says export it from Persephone. There's a magazine, which includes an interview with Jewel State. There's also a cosplay, a interview of somebody who dresses up like her. Uh, then they profile all the other items that are in here. There's two lapel pins, one of which is a founder's pin, which includes a certificate of authenticity. That's the one of the Firefly, and says this pin was created under license from 20th Century Fox exclusively for Firefly Cargo Crate eight founders. Nice. And then the second, the second one is once again Kaylee's uh, umbrella, and it says, "Everything shiny, Captain." So this one I, I'm very impressed with. This is one of the best ones I've gotten like this so far. I highly recommend. Meant for fans of Firefly, I highly recommend this this set. Oh yeah. So. So and this reports uh, there's one every six months and it was a bit over two hundred dollars, I believe. So close to sort of two fifty, two sixty Australian. Plus uh, probably that again in postage. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> if you want to get it down here. But this is possibly my story. It's brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Thanks for that. Now, I just remembered something. Oh, and, and that, whoop, sorry, what was that? I was going to say the, the box is covered with all kinds of artwork from Firefly. You know, the one side has the sticker on it from Persephone. The other side has the Blue Sun logo on it. So they took some time to uh, do things right on this one. Yeah, it sounds like it. So, anyway, um, just really quick, because I told you at the start I'd forgotten something, and I remember what it was. Um, last couple of weeks, we've been doing the Big Five sci-fi series. So sort of, the big when you go to Africa on a, on, a, on a tour and stuff, they've got the Big Five, which is the Big Five things that you want to see while you're there. Lions, elephants, hippos, rhinos, and something else. Water buffalo, I think. Something like that. Um, and they're sort of the, the big things, the main attractions, the sort of thing you want to see. So I thought, well, if sci-fi had a big five, what would the big five in sci-fi be? So I put it up to you guys, the fans, on the Facebook page to see what you guys would vote for. And we got four things that I expected, and to be honest, the fifth one isn't that much of a surprise either. But it's the order that I find amusing, in that the order that they won their slots... So, the first one was Star Trek. Doesn't surprise me. Second one was Stargate. I was expecting Star Wars to win that one, but Stargate won it by a hair right at the end. Which I sort of found amusing. Like, four votes within the last hour of voting. Pushed Stargate to the win. Grr. Yeah. <laughs> and then the week after that, Doctor Who won. And each week, the first... The, to be honest, the first four winning slots were the first four finalists. And each week, the finalist that won was taken off and a new one was put in its place. Um, when Star Trek was taken off, Battlestar was put in its place. When Stargate won, Babylon 5 made the cut into the finalists. So it was... By the time Doctor Who won the third week, Star Wars had been on the finalist thing for three weeks in a row, and by the third week had three votes. Out compared to, I think it was 27, <laughs> which is what Doctor Who got. So, it looks very much like Star Wars was actually going to lose to 
Battlestar, because Battlestar Galactic had the second most votes, and I thought, ooh, that'd be an interesting turn of events. Star Wars doesn't even make it into the top five sci-fi series. Stuart will love that. So the week after that, shock or a gasp, with the three other biggest series gone, Star Wars won. <laughs> <laughs> Which had nothing to do with me saying it. The, like, I admittedly poisoned the well that week. And I poisoned the well hardcore because I wanted to push it over the line. And I said, I can't believe Star Wars hasn't won this, hasn't won a slot in the, in the big five yet. Oh, well, I guess we'll see who wins it this week. Which is effectively saying, oh my god, I can't believe Bernie Sanders hasn't won this primary. Like, um, you guys should really, really vote for him, is effectively what I did. But, yeah. So, for, the, for the record, that is... That was good. actually a really good analogy. That was a really good metaphor, then. Yeah. And just for the record, I do not endorse Bernie Sanders or any other candidate. I just need that to be clear. But... Off the record, Bernie Sanders is the best choice. Just, yeah, not the point. Um, moving right along, before Eugene jumps in and starts stabbing me and telling me to vote for anyone else, since he's the only American on the podcast. I'll, I'll just casually remind you that you're not in this country. <laughs> uh, I'll just casually remind you that Donald Trump you know, is winning for the fucking Republicans and that makes the rest of the world go- shit their collective pants. Yeah, anyway. Um, point being, the fifth slot. The fifth slot was the interesting one. I wasn't 100% sure who was going to win. Now, up until this point, um, every week as different series had won, the, we'd swap them out. So the first round of finals was Star Wars, Stargate, Star Trek, and Doctor Who. Then Battle, Battlestar Galactica replaced Star Trek. Babylon 5 replaced... Star, um, Stargate. Farscape replaced Doctor Who. And then lastly, Firefly replaced Star Wars. So the final round was between Firefly, Babylon 5, Battlestar Galactica, and Farscape. Now, wow, I'm surprised the Firefly fans didn't come out of the woodworks. Oh, they did. But the, the thing that got me surprised was the Babylon 5 guys came out of the woodwork substantially more. <laughs> <laughs> no, to me, okay, let's break... Break down. The, the Big Five is meant to be sort of the five must-see sci-fi series. And to me, Firefly isn't one of those. It's not It's not a big series. It's a good series, but it's not a... Clearly it's not a big series. It got one season. Yeah. Sorry, is that too soon? Yeah, one season. Uh, half a season. Half a season yeah, in a that. movie, technically. But yeah, anyway, the point... 13 episodes. The, the point is, Firefly isn't a big... It's... It, it's Yes, it's a good series. It's top ten. I won't lie. It is. But it's not top five. I honestly expected Battlestar Galactica to come in for the fifth slot. And man, was it close. Farscape didn't even register on the list. It was sort of, yeah, it was sort of like a... I think we had like two votes. Battlestar Galactica did better than that. Because I think it was about 30 or 40 total votes. Because the way you vote is you comment. If you like the the picture, you get an extra vote to whatever you commented on. And if you share the picture, you get an extra vote for whatever you commented on. And then I check all of the shares and tally up all of the votes made on the shares. And all that sort of stuff to sort of bring it all together. Make sure people haven't double voted. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. But it gives me a total sort of final vote tally. Um, So, in the end, Farscape got like three or four votes. Got almost no attention. Battlestar Galactica got about six or seven. Firefly got nine. And Babylon 5 got ten. I think. No. Firefly got 19 and ba- and Babylon 5 got 20. That's right. It was... Yeah. I was going to say, that does, those numbers don't sound right. Let me just check. Yeah. yeah. One vote. It was one vote. It was, it was on... Because it was shared on a Babylon 5 page and everyone went, Oh my god, Babylon 5... I got, like, seven votes just from the Babylon 5 page for Babylon 5. <laughs> so, yeah. Babylon 5. I still don't think it deserves that slot. I still think it should have gone to Battlestar Galactica. But... I think it should have gone to our, Dwarf. It's not our decision. Exactly. It's what the fans vote for. Exactly. I so. still think it should have gone to Red Dwarf. <laughs> oh, that random comment. Not on the picture, so yeah. It's sad, Red Dwarf is sad. Yeah. So, anyway. 
No, I thought that was interesting, and I thought you guys would find that kind of cool. So I just figured I'd mention it. And now, Stuart, it's on to the news. Who do we have a lot of news that came out last week? Especially a lot of April Fool's news, which I'm going to cover a few funny stories. Oh, God. The Wolverine one? So no, 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 the Mark Hamill one. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Mark Hamill put on Twitter that if he got... If he got, ha uh, and I quote, a million, so a million followers, he would, he was given permission by um, <laughs> um, Ryan Johnson, the director of episode eight, to post a spoiler. At the time of when he did the po when the post went up, he was at six hundred thousand followers. That skyrocketed to nine hundred seventy-five thousand. <laughs> wow. And he actually was like, guys, guys, it's just an April Fool's joke. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, he's... Okay, because whenever you get a follower on Twitter, your phone goes bonkers. My one does. I can't imagine, imagine his what phone. His, yeah. No, no, his phone would have just gone into meltdown. It just would have been going... Just turn the phone off. It's like, we're trying to film. Turn your phone off. It's on silent. It's not even on vibrate. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I've turned it off and it's still vibrating. What the hell? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Starts blowing red. It just goes blah, 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 and melts down through the ground. Just sort of disappears. Um, did my phone just melt down? That ain't right. <laughs> so, yeah, we have some sad Star Wars news, actually. Uh, the voice of Admiral Akbar has passed away. Aww. Yeah, Eric Bowersfield. Uh, Bowersfield. Who was who was the voice? We've met the puppeteer, but the actual voice of "It's a Trap" it's has a passed trap. away. Sadly, he was 93 years um, old, and the cause was natural, uh, and the cause of death was natural causes. Yeah. So, Tim, now's your chance to finally voice your character. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah a little sad with that. Um, Rebels season finale was was last week, and oh my lord! I knew there was something I was forgetting. <laughs> so, oh my! Um, oh yeah. On, on another note of sad news, um, we just found out literally yesterday um, that Rainbow Sun Frank's father has passed. Oh. Um, while he's over here at Oz Comic Con, so Rainbow, just for the record, you've been with you've you've helped us out in the past. We're here for you if you need us. Um, just yeah. I know it won't be easy, but we're here for you, brother. So moving right along. Yeah, uh, this is cool. Um, so as we know, Ahsoka left in, um, at the end of the Clone Wars TV series and came back in Rebels. And the big mystery is what happened. Uh, announced last week that we are having, we're going to have an Ahsoka novel series. Oh, nice. So now we get the whole mystery of... Now we get the whole information of what happened between her leaving the, the Order and her joining the up. Rebels. Yeah. 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 We're definitely going to have so, to cover that, that finale, though. Might even have to oh, do that finale. After. I have to do that on. I might even have to do that as an after show if you don't do the. I can't. Up. I can't stay. I can't well, stay. Then do the news be... quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, Square Enix last week had a ma absolute massive um, sort of an E three esque panel where they did um, it was called um Undiscovered Final Fantasy fifteen. So they had fourteen and uh technically fifteen announcements. Um, within that, they announced the release dates, um, uh, a, a demo that's out, uh, a, a mini anime series explaining the, the um, characters, a new CGI um, film done by the, the same studio who did Advent Children. Like, there was so much information that came out, it was ridiculous. Yeah. The cool thing, actually, with the CGI film was that they, um, they revealed three of the um, voice actors, and I lost my... I lost my mind when I heard who it was. Lena Headey, Sean Bean, and Aaron Penn. Cersei, we have Cersei, and we have um, Ned Hardstaff from Game of Thrones in Final Fantasy. 
I, I don't don't even don't, don't, but yeah I know <sighs> wow Final Fantasy <laughs> why do you ruin so many good actors <laughs> wow <laughs> okay, um... I was not expecting that. Yeah, that was I, don't, dark. I, don't, I don't like Final Fantasy, okay? The Final Fantasy games, they're just... They're just all the same. Uh... Moving on to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. news. I knew that would make him run away. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So anyway. we have... We have the announced. We have the uh, the date announced for the season three two hour finale. Yes, two hour finale. It is going to be on May seventeenth. No synopsis revealed yet, but pretty much you can assume it's just going to be everyone going against uh, um, Hydra again. Yeah. Well, I wonder. So, so- I wonder if uh, Civil War is going to play into that because that's only sort of what. A week or so after Civil War comes out, might be. I'm not sure. Civ- As I said, there's no synopsis. There's no real news about it. It's just yeah. a release date. So yeah, so. If, if Civil War comes out in the states on the sixth, I think it is. Yeah, that's what two episodes after Civil War happens. So I'm wondering if Civil War. It might. It might. It, it might end and go and something might happen and bring them into Civil War. Yeah. Or at least I'll make a mention of it at the end of it or something. Yeah. Or they tell me you're in Civil War. So, Batman, the killing jerk. Oh, yeah. We got a preview, got a sneak peek got dropped for it. Oh, yeah. We were going to cover that as well this week, but just... (laughs) Yeah, there's a a lot of stuff that just got dropped last week. Oh, yeah. And oh my goodness, does this, does this movie give me the chills? Oh yeah, it looks really, really good. It looks amazing so to, ha- to have yes. Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy back as their roles. Oh yeah, and the, the cool thing is, what they're doing is they're actually filling out some of Batgirl's story by s- sort of doing a prequel at the start yeah, of the, pro- the storyline. So you, yeah, yeah. you're going to have sort of a they call the... part of a Batgirl sort of scenario, and then the full Killing Joke scenario is almost... So Act 1 is effectively Batgirl, Act 2 and 3 are effectively Killing Joke. Killing Joke. So that's going to be really, really cool. Is that it? You done? Uh... That trailer... That trailer should... Or the trailer and the behind the scenes should be on the Super... Or the Super... The DC Superheroes versus Teen Titans, which is released next week. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good too. Mm. And there's already a few clips I've been I've watched of it already. Yeah. Like what I've seen so far. Really, really like what I've seen so far. So I have with that. So yeah, uh, Batman Killing Joke will premiere at San Diego Comic Con and then will be released in the summer of 2016. So that's for America. So that'll be our winter. Yeah. So yeah, look, definitely looking forward to that. So, yeah. Now I'm really pumped for Comic Con. Like I'm always excited for Comic Con. I'm really excited to see that. Oh yeah. I know we won't get all online, but... Yeah, is, is that your... Are you done? I want to talk yes, Star I am done. Minute. Star Wars time! Woo! So, what do you think of the finale? Oh my god, the, that finale. So I had chills. I, I had chills. They were feels. As soon as I saw the, the, the hooded warrior, I'm like, there's no way that's going to be who I think that is. And <laughs> it was exactly who it I was thought. It was more. It was more. I knew it was more. I knew it was more back when they released that trailer for, like, the second half of the season. Yeah. I was like, Maul's back! And oh, good yeah. God, can he, still, can he still kick ass? Oh, yeah. He takes on three Inquisitors and solos them. And Ahsoka and, um... Kanan. Kanan just sort of look at it like, well, do we huh. help this guy or do we <laughs> not help this guy? Oh well, the answer for a penny is for a pound. Ne- <laughs> the answer is you never help more because you always stab him in the back. Oh yeah. Or in Kanan's case, or in Kanan's case, in the eyes. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah, Kanan's blind now. He's now General Ram. He's now turned into General Ram Kota from Force Unleashed. Yeah. So so he is now a blind Jedi, but he's actually quite brutal now that he's blind. I actually think he's stronger 
now that he's well, because he has to re- he has to rely on on all his on his previous training. Exactly. Um, uh, we see. I love I love Ezra's transformation yeah, in we this. See, we see Ezra tickle the dark side a little. Oh, so dabble in it. Yeah. The, that, that that just that end scene. Oh, cannot wait for next season. And Vader just on top of his Tie Fighter, using the Force to fly it. Oh yeah. Come on now. The thing Come on that now, Anakin, feel... that's not fair. Yeah. The thing that I found cool was when Ahsoka took on Anakin and actually beat him down quite quite substantially and to the point of damaging his mask so she could, you could actually see one of the eyes. And he just looks at her and goes, I love... You abandoned me. And she's like, yeah. Sees the others escaping, but I won't, I won't leave you this time. And, and then like, he's like... Oh. Right and then his next line is yeah, and then his next line is like, "Then you will die." I'm like, Anakin, <laughs> this is your this is snips. Yeah. And so the last we see, she just uh, doesn't care. Yeah. Last we see of Ahsoka is she is the, she is either dead or down for the count. It's not necessarily explicit as to yeah, which th- one. Yeah, they've left. Yeah, they've left. They've left. Like, like they just left it on a, on a cliffhanger, which is great. Yeah. You see, okay. Question: How long have they been able to fly with their double-sided lightsabers like that? I don't know. That, that <laughs> was friggin' shenanigans. I'm like, no, that is not a thing. What the hell? Oh, it, it's a thing, all right, and it got them all killed. <laughs> that was that really was no, no. You know what the weirdest thing about the whole thing was? The new Inquisitor's lightsaber turns off, and then he has a saw. No, that what use does that even have when you have a lightsaber? Torture. <laughs> they're, they're, you could torture with a lightsaber. You just turn the fre- you just turn the frequency down, and you can just leave stab wounds. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, that finale. I was I was like, eh, it should be interesting. Oh, look, it's that Sith Temple thing. See a random Sith in a hood is like, oh god, that better not be Darth Maul. Ah, oh, son of a bitch, it's Darth Maul. <laughs> oh man! No, that was that. Isn't that was that truly wild. One of the. And be- the I'm not. Oh, you go. I was just gonna say that had some of the best fight scenes we've seen in Rebels. It's had some of the best. I think it's some of the best we've fight scenes we've seen in Star Wars. Yeah. So that 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 is truly one of the best finales of any season of any show I've seen in a while oh yeah that 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 left that that answered questions but left us with more questions which is what Star Wars should oh yeah and I can't wait to see who the big bad is for next for next season because oh, there's a yeah. few there's a few rumors flying about so yeah on some sides people think it's gonna be Vader some people think it could be Grand Admiral Thrawn yeah, and some people think they're going to set up um, what's his face from Force Awakens. The, the ah Snoke, Gollum. Snoke. Yeah, Gollum. Poor any circus. Yeah. You do one memorable role, and you can't do anything else except being called Gollum. <laughs> hey, I'm only calling that thing Gollum because it looks like in Gollum. It, it it actually it, it looks how, like a Bowscar golem. Even even how it should have ended spoof that, which was yes hilarious. yes. So anyway, we're we're out of time. We're going to stop drooling about Star Wars, and um, let you guys go. Make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci fi facebook.com slash sci fi wars. Um, that's a new project I'm working on. It looks like it's going to be really really cool. Um, facebook.com slash save sci fi podcast for all your podcast stuff, obviously. Uh, check out Garrison 7 because we've got they've still got some big news they're sitting on and it's annoying me that they haven't done it yet. They said they're going to do it like weeks ago, but they've decided to hold off until Supernova. So hopefully we'll be able to talk about it after this weekend. Hopefully. Um, not only that, there's lots of other cool things, so keep an eye out for that. We will catch you next time. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. And just because I never ever say it, we record live. Brisbane, Australia time at 9am every Tuesday morning, which is, I don't know, sometime in America. Bye. Bye.
Okay. 